What's up guys and girls? Let's chat about Kubernetes trends. I'm getting questions on three areas from my customers, as in customers of AWS who are using Kubernetes, way more than before. So I thought I will make this quick video going over these three trends so that you can stay ahead of the pack. And these topics are coming more in interviews as well as real world projects. By the way, this is a different setting than I usually record. Usually I record in my office, which is through that door. Super hungry, so I'm cooking lunch. So I thought I'll just make this video um, while I'm here. Okay, so the first trend is creating a internal developer platform on Kubernetes along with GitOps. Why is this becoming popular? Because um, you don't need to ma maintain different DevOps pipeline uh, with different infrastructure as code, like Terraform CloudFormation to provision different AWS resources. With this internal developer platform, you can use Kubernetes APIs with controller and operator to go and provision AWS resources from Kubernetes. This also makes you take advantage of GitOps. You know, uh, if you deploy something from um, Git to your Kubernetes cluster using GitOps, and something goes wrong in the cluster, let's say your pod gets deleted or someone goes changes something like a service, using GitOps, a Kubernetes can reconcile and fix itself. Now, if you define or create a AWS resource from this Kubernetes cluster to AWS, let's say in Lambda, GitOps can fix that AWS resource as well. So let's say you provision a Lambda from the Kubernetes cluster using GitOps, and someone goes to the AWS console and change the Lambda, Kubernetes will bring the Lambda back to the desired state as defined in the Git. Who should learn it? So there are two components to this uh, internal developer platform. One is creating the platform on Kubernetes. That part, your platform team or the operations team or cloud center of excellence team or central team uh, will need to learn like how to, how to install certain softwares, how to maintain them, etc. And they will expose certain parameters using which the application teams uh, can use this. So if you are an application team, you need to know like what kind of YAML file you should create to define your infrastructure. So what tools are there? The most popular one is Crossplane. Crossplane can uh, run in any cloud, so any Kubernetes cluster in any cloud. Uh, so that is more popular. Uh, if you want to use AWS native tool, there is SEK, which is AWS controller for Kubernetes. And going back to developer versus operation responsibility, with Crossplane, the platform team needs to know how to install Crossplane, how to create different compositions, and the developer team needs to know how to write the claim files or YAML files uh, to define resources. Where should you learn it from? Uh, so you can look up open source documentation, but AWS has a workshop where we show how can you install and provision resources using Crossplane, as well as uh, blogs on SEK. Okay, the second trend that's gaining a lot of popularity is data on EKS. So this is pretty clear that Kubernetes is becoming the common abstraction layer across all cloud as well as on-prem. It is becoming the lowest denominator. Uh, organizations are thinking, hey, if I upskill my folks in Kubernetes, then I can switch cloud, I can even run the same container in on-prem in Kubernetes, etc. Data on EKS it basically runs different analytics and machine learning tools on EKS, for example, uh, Spark, uh, Jupyter, Kubeflow. It can even run uh, workflow engines like Apache Airflow. Uh, it can run a distributed a database like uh, Cassandra, Presto, etc. So that's one reason it's getting popular. And second reason is uh, Kubernetes can scale. You can control different scaling parameters. In same cluster, you can establish uh, multi-tenancy. You can isolate team one, team two. Team two could be a machine learning team. Team one could be web application teams. But at this point, Kubernetes is pretty mature. We know how to isolate those tenants as well as implement security rules, all that stuff. Who should learn it? Kind of same deal as the last one. The platform team uh, will provide you with the platform, which is EKS, but the application team needs to know how to write the Jupyter Hub jobs or like Kubeflow, Spark jobs, etc., and how to submit them. And also generally, the platform teams are not going to know a lot more about machine learning because that's a very niche area. The application team needs to do that. 
Now, where from should you learn it? This is the good news. AWS actually provides a lot of blueprints for data on EKS. So let's say you want to submit a Spark job or you want to uh, create a Kubeflow on EKS. You can simply go to data on EKS website and you will see AWS provides you like a Terraform modules. So you can run a couple commands and your Kubeflow on EKS will be up and running with best practices built in. Okay, so the third trend uh, is cost optimization. You might say that uh, Raj, cost optimization was always there. Yes, but what's changing is it's shifting more towards left or more towards the developers. Uh, so I have run multiple cost optimization sessions recently. I was actually at Washington DC at a customer uh, this week and it was packed. Like developers and application teams are interested in cost optimization. Why? Because the platform teams and executive management implementing a chargeback model where each team are seeing how much money they're spending. I am also seeing that cost optimization is going beyond a traditional compute optimization. How do you optimize cost in Kubernetes? Basically, pod request limit is the main thing. I, I'm seeing that that one folks already know. Now the attention is shifting in two areas. One is how do you optimize cost beyond this compute stuff? How do you optimize network cost? How do you optimize logging cost? How do you optimize storage cost if there is any, etc. So where from should you learn it? So check out a FinHack workshop for AWS, uh, it goes over a particular tool called Cube, Cube Cost, which shows the cost on a very granular level, not only your pod, but namespace based on label, cluster, etc. And it also shows you how can you uh, optimize them. It shows you network cost as well as other costs. And who should learn this one? Everyone. So <laughs> platform team needs to learn this one as well as the application teams. All right, those are the three hot trends that's going on. Hopefully this was helpful. If I missed any particular trend that you are seeing in your project, let me know in the comments down below. If this video was helpful, click that like button, smash it if that's something you are into and subscribe. All right, with that, I'm gonna cook my salmon and have my lunch. All right, folks, enjoy your day. Have a good one, bye.